Hello and welcome everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to share my everyday 60s inspired makeup tutorial with you. I'm also going to show you how I do this hairstyle, which is really highly inspired by Miss Mary and Faithful and also Jenny Boyd. And if you want to see how I create this classic 60s makeup look and 60s hairstyle, keep on watching. So right now my face is completely bare. All I did was just to wash it and then I applied some face oil. I personally think that oil works the best for my skin, but as you can see, I do have like some blemishes here and there. I feel like a lot of it comes from wearing masks all the time, but yeah, I just like to cover it up to give me more of a fresh and flawless look. So what I like to use is this foundation, it's called Pretty Natural. I use the lightest shade that they have because I'm really, really pale. And I just like to use a little bit of this and then just really make sure that I don't apply too much of like a thick coat because I feel like the 60s were all about a really natural look. So I like to use these little sponges and I just take them and put them under running water for a minute or so. And then I just squeeze it to make sure that I get all of the excess water out. And then I just put the tiniest bit of foundation on the sponge and then start applying it to my face so usually just like do something like this and then start working it in as you can see this isn't like high coverage and you will still see like some of my imperfections but I honestly don't mind that I would much rather have a look where you can still see some imperfections but it still looks really natural I just personally prefer that over a really masky looking face so during the 60s people weren't really using a lot of makeup and it was mainly all about like doing your eyes and maybe wearing a little bit of blush but as said i feel like most of the people in the 60s had really nice skin or just like the media portrayal of people in the 60s always had that like really fresh faced look and so i just like to kind of fix my face a little for that one question I get a lot is if I wear makeup every single day and if I do my makeup in like the 60s or 70s look every day and I do and I don't. So I don't really wear makeup every single day. I would say I probably wear makeup three to four times a week and if I do my makeup I will always go for like a 60s cut crease because it's just what I find suits myself the best and what I love to do with my face but there are plenty of days where I just don't feel like doing my makeup and I'll just let my skin breathe for a day. So next up I just like to use a little bit of concealer and what I like to do with this is to just apply it under my eyes. I usually have dark circles underneath there and then on like the really big spots that I have to just kind of take a little bit of that red away and then I just work it in with the sponge. As for products, I just feel like these work the best for me because as said, I'm really pale so sometimes it's hard for me to find a good color match. But this brand really has a good skin tone for me. My, my skin also is a little yellowish. So if the makeup color isn't the right match, I will look really sick really quickly. So I always like have to make sure I find a good color match. So this is usually all I do to just kind of fix my face and get that ready. I personally don't like to do any contouring. It wasn't really popular during the 60s and 70s. And I like the fresh face look that it has right now. As said, it's not really masky. You could definitely do more, but I just really like that natural 60s look. And I get a lot of questions of people saying they do their makeup in the 60s way, but it always looks really modern. And people tell me that I like have a 60s face. And I truly believe that you don't really have like a a decades face or something. I just honestly think that if you like do a 60s eye makeup but then you do all the heavy contouring it will automatically look a lot more modern than if you just like tone it down a little. So if you're going for a 60s look I would always advise you to use less product, less steps. The 60s weren't really all about using a ton of makeup on your face. Most people only had a few products so I would just always recommend you to keep it a little more easy. So let's move on with my eyes and I'm gonna start by applying some eyeshadow and I actually have something really exciting to tell you and that is that I'm now officially an ambassador for Love Child Beauty. If you don't know who they are, they make incredible cruelty-free makeup and let me just show you a peek inside the palette. 
They have so many wonderful colors. I love the color names. They are called Penny Lane and Lennon and Bell Bottoms and Hendrix. And basically it's all about the spirit of the 60s and 70s. And I honestly think the colors are perfect. If you use my code, which is Emma S, you will get 10% off all of your Love Child Beauty orders. And I really like to use the palette for doing my everyday makeup. I've been pretty much using it every single day since I got it. So let me just show you which colors I like to use and how I apply them. So I like to start with this color, which is called Penny Lane. It's just a really natural beige tone. And I like to apply this all over my lid just to give me a base for the entire makeup look that I'm doing today. So as said, this is like my go-to look. This is what I like to do on the daily and it's usually the blueprint for a lot of makeup looks that I do so I will just like swap out colors or add some crystals or something so for me personally this is like the blueprint of what I will do so next up I'm gonna use the shade hippie which is just a little bit of this sparkling nude color and I'm just gonna apply this on top so I personally like to go with a little less eyeshadow and just kind of have a little bit of a translucent look but as you can see the Love Chat Beauty products are really really well pigmented and I love the way you can apply them they're really soft and easy to blend which is something I really admire in makeup products and I feel like it makes it a lot easier to get a really nice and even look and then to brighten my eyes I'm gonna go in with the color white rabbit which is just a white color and I'm just gonna lightly tap that on top I feel like sparkling eyeshadow wasn't really that popular in the 60s which is why I like to matte it down at the end lightly tapping it so I don't lose like the color of the shades that I applied earlier so this is sort of the base that I do for my eyes so next up I'm gonna use a different palette which is this tiny little one it looks a little ratchet I got this by friend but this color is just perfect for me and what I love about this color is that it kind of has the perfect amount of glitter so it's not too shimmery but it kind of adds something special and I just like to apply this a little bit towards the inner corner of my eye to really brighten my eyes and just open them up and kind of create the illusion of these big doll-like eyes. And then with this tiny angled brush, which is the brush that I usually use for doing my cut crease, and I'm gonna use it for that later, I also go in with the classic white rabbit white shade again and I'm just applying this right in the inner corners of my eyes, like right here just for like the illusion of big round eyes just like this so as you can see it's a really classic look but I honestly really like that it's a really toned down look so far but honestly for me this is perfect for an everyday 60s look and it's just what I like to do on the daily so next up with this angled brush again I'm gonna do the classic 60s cut crease and I usually like to go with either Marrakesh Express Laura Canyon, tooled leather, or I also sometimes like to go with Blackbird Fly. However, today I kind of feel like Laura Canyon, which is this really nice dark brown, is the perfect look for me. I feel like a dark brown is the most classic color you can go with for a 60s cut crease. I usually just keep my eye open for this and then trace the shape that I want to go with. So this is usually the shape that I go for. I just kind of go with the original. I just kind of go with the natural shape of my eye. And now I'll gradually work in more color. So this is what it looks like right now. I just have one eye done so far. I kind of really like how it is turning out. And so now I'm just gonna move on to the other eye. So it's really hard to talk while I do this. 
So let me just answer the questions I usually get asked about this part the most right now. So one of the questions I always get is how do you kind of make sure that these level up so that your eyes are symmetrical? And first of all, I don't think you have to make the two bows symmetrical to one another. I think you have to make them match with the shape of your eyes. So basically I just draw in the natural shape of my eyes so I kind of like go a little bit above my natural crease and then do it and I feel like it works the best for me. And then another question that I get asked a lot is how to like color match. As said, I feel like a dark brown is always a good color. I usually think black is a little harsh, but you can definitely go with black if that is what you like. I also sometimes like to go with colors that are in my outfit. So if I wear something with like a softer brown, I usually tend to go for a lighter color. So with Twiggy lashes, sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Twiggy lashes are basically the lashes that you kind of draw on underneath your lower lash line. Sometimes I really like to go with them, sometimes I don't. However, today I decided to go with them in a really light way because usually if I do it, I will apply them really, really lightly. I know that some people like to go in with like a really thick and heavy black Twiggy look, but I usually like to go for something a little bit more natural. So I will go in with the same color, Laura Canyon, and this brush. This is actually a lip brush, but what I like about it is that it is really thin in this way. It kind of like has a really classic brush shape and I find that this works the best for me personally. So what I like to do is to just kind of tap it in the shade and then make sure that I like flick it a little to get rid of any excess product. And then I just really, really lightly draw them on. And I usually just go with a couple, as you can see, I did four on this side so far. And I kind of really like how this is looking. I'm gonna add a few more and I usually just go with the natural shape of my eye as well. So if I would just go like start here and then draw outwards. So that's usually what I like to go with. Just making them really, really soft. And then I like to do that on the other eye as well. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of pressure to the brush with my nail right here, just to make it like even sharper. But yeah, as said, to me, the Twiggy lashes are definitely optional. I do them sometimes, sometimes I don't. If I do them, I usually do them really light, like I did them today. And I don't like to go all the way around because I feel like it kind of closes the eye if I put them really far right in here. But by adding them to the outer corners, it just adds to that really big doll-like look. So next up, I'm gonna go in with eyeliner. I personally love to use felt tips. I feel like they are the easiest to control, for me at least. So I will just add this and I usually try to go for like a medium thick eyeliner. So let's see. And then one more thing I find usually helps with a really 60s look instead of a modern look is to not wing out your eyeliner but rather take it down a little. Instead of taking it out or even upwards, I just draw it out a little bit to kind of create a really 60s eye look. And now I'm gonna do that on the other eye as well. So one more tip I have for applying 60s and 70s inspired eyeliner is to not take it out too far and not make it like super thin and pointy at the end. I feel like that's a really modern look, but kind of like have a more thicker end. So next up, I'm gonna do my lashes. The 60s weren't really about fake lashes. So what I like to do is to just make my lashes as big as possible with mascara. And to achieve that look, I go with a primer and then with the top colors. So let's start with the base and kind of already shaping my eyelashes. I'm also making sure to just really separate my lower lashes. And then I'm just going in with the black. And I just try to be really careful when I do my lower lashes 
So I feel like if you're really carefully applying mascara and just really taking your time with it, you can already get a really good doll-like look without adding any fake lashes. So for eyebrows, the 60s weren't really about eyebrows. This is what my eyebrows look like naturally. I don't really plug them in any like form or way. Sometimes I just pluck them if I feel like they come down too much. So I don't really do anything about it. But I also have bangs, so you can't even really see them. And then finally, I just like to go with the tiniest bit of blush and a tiny bit of lipstick and I like to use the Dr. Papa. basically it's just a nice tinted lip balm and you can also use it as blush so I just usually tap a little bit on my cheeks just like this and with blush to go for a 60s look don't take it up too far but like rather keep it in the front to kind of like right here. I feel like with modern day makeup you would take it up on your cheekbones but for the 60s it was really more about just having it on your cheeks like this and then I also use this on my lips just a little bit to just give me a natural look and also because I usually have really dry lips especially during the winter so that's always good. Okay, so that's pretty much the finished makeup. So next up, I'm just gonna heat up my straightener and show you what I like to do with my hair and how I like to style it. So as for the cut, I usually cut my hair myself. It's just all one length down here. I have kind of curly hair naturally. Sometimes I embrace it a little more than other days. And then I have these little two side parts, really inspired by Miss Mary and Faithful. And I usually just kind of part them and just kind of like separate that hair from the rest. So I don't really like to curl my entire head of hair or straighten everything. I also feel like it damages my hair a lot. So I only do the front parts usually. Sometimes I do my bangs, but usually they already line up really nicely naturally. Something I also really like to use is dry shampoo like this. I feel like it adds a lot of volume. And the 60s were really all about having a lot of volume in your hair. So now that this is sort of heated up, I only turn it to 180. I feel like that's definitely hot enough and then what I like to do let's see I don't have a mirror here so I'm just using like the little display on the camera but what I like to do is to just put this through and then curl it inwards so basically this is like the shape that I'm going for so I will just kind of curl it this way and then hold it like this for me like holding it and really like shaping the curl with my hand usually works the best it's already looking really nice so usually just let it sit for a minute and then while I wait to the other side I think it's really important to kind of like curl it rather inwards than outwards I usually just do this like a couple of times if I had a third hand this would be really much easier yeah I already kind of like how it's looking so I just kind of try to make it even by going over it a couple of times and like getting a nice nice little curl let's do the ends a little more and then for me it's really all about like the front parts right here so I usually take my time with these because as I said I don't really like do anything else I really like how this is looking so now I'm just like going in with a little bit of dry shampoo this is also for colored hair which is great for me and then I usually just like let it sit on my bangs for a minute just kind of like rub it in. I also love how this smells. And then I know that you're supposed to brush it out, but I feel like doing this is kind of like helping me a lot better with it. And then just kind of like fixing my hair after. I feel like people who have bangs know that you like always constantly just reassort them. And then I usually just take in these parts again. And then I just try and go back and forth until they're even. Okay, and then when I kind of have this look that I really like, I just pull the rest of my hair forward and I'm done. So one more thing I like to add before I leave, and that is a perfume. I'm currently obsessed with the Mystic Musk by Florence. I got this gift set and it is a scented oil. It smells so, so nice. 
scented oils were really popular in the 60s and 70s and I just love the design. It is so so dreamy and beautiful so I'm gonna have that linked in the description box as well if you want to try it and bring back the scent of the 60s and 70s. So this is usually my everyday look. This is what I like to do with my hair and my face and that's also basically it for today's video. I'm gonna put up some shots now of the finished makeup and hair so you can properly see everything that I did. Hope you enjoyed the video if you did i would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend it supports me it supports the channel and it would truly mean the world if you're interested in all things 60s and 70s like the makeup the fashion the pop culture the people make sure to subscribe to my channel because i upload videos every single week all about that and i would love to have you around if you recreate this look or you just want me to see your everyday 60s and 70s makeup looks, make sure to tag me on Instagram or on TikTok. I'll have my username right here. I'm at Emma Rosa Katarina pretty much everywhere and I would love to see your looks and tell you how incredible you look. I hope you have a wonderful day. Go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next one. Bye everyone!